The Remy cord is so broken that it requires two uploads in one day, baby. Let's go. First, you guys saw how broken the Remy cord combo tutorial was. As you guys saw, I posted earlier today. So I'm going to now post the Drum Record deck profile, baby. And I'm going to talk very in-depth about all the deck choices and why you need to play them and how you can put up six negates very easily. So if you guys are ready for this video, all I ask is smash the subscribe button for three uploads in one day. Smash the like button. And let's get started, boys. It's time. It's time to showcase you guys why the Remy Cord is not a deck to joke around or trifle with. It's a deck to put up six negates with. Let's go. I know what you're thinking. You're looking at this deck and you're like, yo, Triff, why aren't you wearing your robe? Well, truthfully, it's because my deck is too hot, bro. That's why. It's deck profile time. Are you guys ready for this? I have a question for you guys. A question. How much... How many cards is in your average deck? 40, right? Well, how many starters does that 40 uh, card deck play? Like 10? Well, my deck doesn't just play, bro. My deck is so good that it literally plays more starters in my deck than your deck actually has cards. So your deck has 40 cards in your deck. My deck has 43 starters. We are not the same. This deck is so good and underrated, and it's all protected via the magical meltdown effects of all the Remy cords in the scale. I love this deck. Before I explain each and every single card, I want to give a massive shout out to every one of you. I released my Remy cord playmat a few days ago with the intention of or buying exactly what was ordered. And I'm, I already posted my order, and they're all coming very soon in a few weeks. So whoever ordered it, good for you. We literally sold, you won't believe, like, more than I've ever had a release for before. So if you guys want your Dream Record play mats moving forward, I'm sorry. They're off the site at the moment. In a few weeks, I'll try to get them back again. This is just a, a quick order so I could ship it to whoever wants. But the Dream Record play mats, I'll put them back in stock maybe in, like, a month or something. But for those that ordered it, it'll be there soon, okay? Uh, I'll send it to you guys as soon as possible. Anyways, let's get back into this video. So... Diviner of the Heralds, you guys might not know this card, is coming out soon in a, in a month. It's not released at the moment. But don't worry. I know you're thinking, like, yo, Trip, I want a Dormy Core deck I can play now. Don't worry. I'll post that in a few days. Don't worry. This is just the best way to play Dormy Core with Diviner of the Heralds. But I'm going to showcase now the Needle Fiber combo. I'm going to post one later with Dagda that you can utilize right now. So instead of utilizing Needle Fiber uh, for crazy six negate shenanigans that you saw earlier in today's video... This is going to be utilizing that exact 6 gate combo, but the next video we'll be posting will be Dagda. Anyways, triple Diviner of the Herald, triple Dremi Gord Kutea, triple Mansea. So Diviner of the Herald, for those who don't know, you normal summon Heralds, uh, Diviner of the Herald, you send tri uh, Trius, Hierarchia, uh, effect. Long story short, Diviner of the Herald special summons Dremi Gord Kutea from your deck. This card literally says, if you guys could read closely, if this card is normal or special summon, special summon Dremi Gord Kutea from your deck. That's what Trius allows. So then Kutea will trigger and you just win. Uh, next we have Fanseya, which is actually still a starter because you take Fanseya and use Fanseya effect to send the card you would add with Kutea. And typically it seems like you want to add like a scale. So obviously Kutea is better than Fanseya, but Fanseya for one is level four that you could pendulum summon out. And for two, uh, when you don't open Kutea, you normal Fanseya and just pendulum out the Angolea that you're searching. Uh, triple Gracie and Triple Angolea. You guys gotta understand this: that both Gracie and Angolea are the cards you want to add to your hand post uh, after you're done the searching, after you're done the adding. You want to search these two and pendulum summon them out because that's how you get your combo. As you guys saw the six negate combo tutorial, and Triple Dreamia is just an extender in the deck because you're playing maxed out of all good Doremi cords. You play two Coolia and one Butea. Uh, one Butea is solid to have. It's an auto win against Elich. And the level and scale is all very important with the levels and scales, especially when Musasea comes out. I opted not to even throw in Musasea right, right now. I just wanted to showcase how good Divine of the Heralds was. But if I had an opportunity, of course, I would love to play Musasea. And it will be up to you. I'll probably remove Satellite Warrior or Baron. I know Baronis isn't out yet, but when Baronis comes out, Satellite Warrior for that. Uh, but at the moment, this is like, would be the best way to play it, just so you guys are aware. Uh, and then, yeah, as for Drumea, it's an extender you need to play it. And now... Triple Zephyr, Triple Zephyr Nui. Zephyr Nui is oddly okay to, to open. It's literally a starter for you. You want... The thing with this deck is this. This deck pluses like crazy. The whole deck's a plus. 
if you look at every single card in the deck, they're all plus ones. They really are. As you guys saw, the six negates, right? But um, how do you get up the negates? Like, how, how do you get them? You get what I'm saying? Like, like the Remy Court's plus like crazy, but how are you putting negates on board? So what Zephyrus do is they ensure that you get the negates. What Red Eyes Fusion does, it ensures that you get the negates. When your opponent, uh, your opponent is going to, let's say that your opponent Nibiru's you, right? So you want to play through all hand traps. I know it seems like the deck doesn't play around Droll, but it really does. Uh, the, all the Doremi Court spells don't care about Droll. Uh, Elegance plays around Droll very easily. You just scale your two cards. It's just place from deck, not add from deck. So you, the whole deck plays around Droll unless you open like five of these spells, like the search spells. You don't need to search with these. You can still get a lot of negates with them. And that's why you play Red Eyes Fusion because of Droll. So let's say someone Nibiru's and Droll's you. I mean, that's fucking fine. Because if they, uh, Nibiru or Droll or both, you're, you're totally okay. Because Zephyr Nui effect will ensure your counter trap negate. That's a beautiful thing about Zephyr Nui, that through Nibiru, you're always fine. You get the negate. But now the reason why I play Red Eyes Fusion is there's a built-in combo in this deck where as long as you have one of these 30 Doremi cords in your scale, you use the uh, Gracia to search your field spell. Where's the field spell? There it is. Gracia's, this field spell is amazing. You activate the field spell to now add from your extra deck, you add, uh, where is it? You add Drumea. And typically you don't use this turn one. You add Drumea. And then even if you're putting Nibiru as your big pendulum summon, you resolve Sork, you resolve Zephyr Nui, you resolve Gracia. Like you're plusing like crazy. You have like four cards in hand. Then Nibiru, okay, no problem. You have a token. You have Divine Strike in hand. Well, okay. Well, you specifically find a way to get Drumea in the extra deck or your scale by Elegance or whatever. And then you just add Drumea back with the field spell you search from Gracia, activate, special summon, and then you just make a Verde Anaconda with a Nibiru token and Drumea, even if you wasted your normal summon. Or you save a normal summon because the deck, if you don't open one of these six, you don't have a normal summon or these nine. So even through Nibiru, you're still ending on Red Eyes, like you're ending on Dragoon and Divine Strike. Like the deck's insane. Uh, what makes the deck insane is the fact that Pendulum Sorcerer is a tuner and can pop your Oracle of Zephyr, can pop your useless. Uh, Angolea's or, or pop Drumea. The beautiful thing of this is that Sorcerer could pop the Drumea that you put in scale via Elegance and then you use the effect from Gracia to get the field spell. The field spell adds this back to your hand and, and special summon it back. The same thing with Kulia. If you want to add Kuria back to your hand from your extra deck, you could do so. Then special summon it by its own effect. So Drumea and Kuria are the, are the free extenders essentially that you do cool plays with Sork where you could put them in the scale via the elegance and you just add it back with harmonia and whether you did it normal or not you utilize this combo in a very efficient way uh you play one celestial because the best perform power but mainly auto synchron perform power because it's a tuner hence making sork a tuner and not enabling your needle fiber combo and i know you're playing extravagance and, and prosperity and you're like shrift what the hell are you doing what if you banish your extra deck it doesn't matter like it doesn't matter what you banish because this is why you play two verde and two dragoon if you were to banish even both Verde, I don't give like I don't care. This deck's not like dead set on one engine. You have a Synchro engine, you have a Dragoon engine, and you also have a Mascarena engine. So you have three engines in your extra deck for, for your negates. As long as one of those three are left, you're giving a big FU to your opponent. You're good because you're going to have, even if one of the three is left, typically all three will survive because you're playing doubles. But if, or two of them will survive, so you go for the two row. You go Needle Viper combos and Dragoon combos. You have all these synchros in case a few have to get banished, you know? So it works out really well. Extravagance is actually surprisingly really good with this deck. Uh, Elegance, you always use the second effect of Elegance, not the third. So it never actually uh, screws up with any of the pots. Uh, and then, yeah, you play a bunch of Oracle spells. You also play ones up for Thubin because uh, with the way the scales are, sometimes you want to make one of these your high scale. The field spell really allows you to do that, uh, especially with Terraforming if you need it sometimes. You can make any of these Doremi Chords scale 9, every single one of them. If you need B, they're, they're all high scales, which is really cool. Uh, so you sometimes want to use Zephrath to send a low scale. And then Trias for this, Red Eyes Fusion combo. And you have, the only reason I'm playing 60 is just so you don't open Red Eyes Fusion. That's it. And the fact that I would love to literally play 100 cards in this deck. That's how good it is. Uh, we play one Pendulum Treasure just for shits and gigs. It's a searchable target with Duelist Alliance. You have five Pendulum Monsters that you want to Pendulum Summon. You want to Pendulum Summon Gracia. You want a Pendulum Summon Angolea. You want a Pendulum Summon Cutea or Slash Normal Summon. You want a Pendulum Summon Zephyr Nui. You want a Pendulum Summon Form Power Pendulum Sorcerer. You want a Pendulum Summon Celestial Magician. You want to summon basically your whole deck. That's how good this deck is. 
So Duelist Alliance, the goal is to search performed by the Pendulum Sorcerer, but uh, if you already have it, you can get Pendulum Treasure to send like a Gracia or an Angalea, depending on what you're missing. And Angalea summons out Kulia, for those who don't know. The combo with Angalea is you just special summon Angalea, effect, tribute, special Korea, you got yourself a Walmart Dryden, which is a pretty good card. Uh, your six plots, the one red eyes, one Harmonia, and you play also one Musica. There's a cool play where your goal is to summon both one Gracia and one Angalea, and if you summon both, uh, you're going to use Angalea effect to summon out of Kulia, and then you're going to have a scale four and a scale one on the field, which are opposite scales, odd and even, hence making Musica be able to destroy any card. Uh, it literally just says destroy one card. It's a Regeki break, not just a Dryden. It could pop a Spell or Trap, which is very helpful. And when you combine this with Divine Strike, bro, what's your opponent siding? Sphere Mode? Is your opponent deciding Dark Ruler? Like Dark Ruler? You could literally let the Dark Ruler resolve. You don't care, bro. So when you have two traps and you have three monster negates, like monsters that are negates, what's your opponent doing? Like literally nothing. Uh, this is the side deck. Uh, hand traps are for bums. Don't play hand traps. Uh, I would rather see one Sphere Mode than, th than one Ash, one Nibiru, and one uh, Veiler. You know what I mean? Like Sphere Mode does the job regardless, and you're able to draw into it via all these. Imagine Potter Prosperity into a Sphere Mode. Imagine extravagance into the Sphere Mode. Like, these spells search these, draw these cards, right? So you have 9 cards in 60. 9 in 60 with this many draw cards, you're going to fucking open it, bro. That's it. So that's how you play this. And you, same with Backer. You're playing so much. And since you're not playing Servant or Abductor, you could freely wait until you draw into these or with your 6 cards. So I'm a big believer in destroying boards after they're made as opposed to stopping them before they're made. You have to de decide one or the other. Uh... You don't want to draw into hand traps. You don't want to draw into a six card hand trap. I hate that. Uh, if Konami one day changes the rule where you you both start with six cards, sorry, uh, going second player starts with six cards, uh, he, he just skips his next draw phase. That way, he, if he has a hand trap, he could do it. Then I'll play hand traps. But until then, it's just way too often happening that you, this is just way better. Extra deck now, one Masquerina and two targets for Masquerina as an interruption. And they're not just targets. It's also good to have standalone by itself to clear boards for Underworld Goddess gets rid of Dragoon easily. And Appaloosa is Appaloosa. Double Verde, double Dragoon in case of Extravagance. Double Needle Fiber in case of Extravagance. One Formula, one Desert Locust, Dragster for combos with Needle Fiber. One, uh, I would play Savage over the uh, Berserker Tiny, but unfortunately, I don't have any Link Monster in the graveyard in this combo. So you have to play this. And then it, it combos well with the formula and the tangy to make Satellite Warrior. But Baronis is better when it comes out. Uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. And what moves to say, uh, and yeah, that, that's it. The deck's amazing. I'm a big fan of it. Uh, I I love the Remy Quartz. I think the Remy Quartz are highly underrated. They give you a Magical Meltdown effect for all your Pendulum Summon to make sure they resolve. So I'm trying to take advantage of every single really broken Pendulum Monster, such as Zephyr Nui or Pensork, that resolve like crazy. Even Harmonizing. So in a few days, I'll be posting a video uh, of... <laughs> the most insane like deck you could do with the Remy Quartz. I'm just going to give you guys a sneak peek right now. And the sneak peek is uh, Kutea's level 1. Tell me another broken Pendulum monster that's level 1. Uh, Magician Souls. Because Magician Souls is a fucking Pendulum. I don't care what anyone says. Tell me another one. DD Kepler, Lamia, Jester Confit. All these broken level 1s just happen to be level 1. So what happens when you play Triple Wear of Thou, Triple Jack in a Box, and you play the Endymion Engine with 10,000 spell cards? You got yourself what I think is probably the most insane deck ever. So I'm still working on ratios for that list. I think it's incredible. And when you play a Harmonizing Magician as well, and Magicians to search the, the souls with Time Star and do some crazy plays, it'll blow your mind how good this is when all these amazing monsters resolve and you play zero scales to Pendulum Summon them out after you use their effects. So I'll be showcasing that video as well soon. But in the meantime, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, smash the like button if you guys enjoyed it. Smash the subscribe button. This is the third upload in the day, a stream and two videos. And I want this to be a reoccurring thing. I want this to be a reoccurring thing. So if you guys got this far, let me know if you guys want to see it. It's not work for me. I love what I do, which is why I'm doing what I love. I could do this forever. I could post 17 videos in a day and I'll have an absolute blast and it'll never feel like work. So if you guys ever want, if you guys want to see more videos daily, let me know. I would love to do it. And this is, it's not like a drop in quality because this is probably the most insane Dragon Core deck you'll ever see. This is just something I love doing. Uh, and thanks to COVID, I can't do anything outside. Canada is still on lockdown. So I would prefer to spend my time playing Yu-Gi-Oh! Anyways, than, than getting sauce at a bar. Or why not both? Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace! <laughs>